if you've been paying attention to Arcane's upcoming Prey reboot, you'll have seen that it features quite a few unusual mechanics and abilities, including but not limited to turning into a super-powered coffee cup. Well, we recently went hands-on with the first hour of the game and found a few new things that you can do that might not all be quite as weird, but are certainly just as useful. Scanning target, no type of material detected. Although you can hack many computer terminals dotted throughout Talos 1, it appears some machinery is already friendly to begin with. These turrets are programmed to scan living organisms and allow humans to pass by unharmed while firing on the alien Typhon. But if you don't like their placement, you can just pack them down and take them with you to redeploy anywhere so that they can cover your back while you continue looting corpses undisturbed. Mind you, they can easily get knocked over by a fast-moving mimic, so it's probably not wise to depend on them too much. Thanks a lot, turret friend. While neuro mods allow you to enhance your abilities by sticking alarmingly long needles in your eyes, there are other, less stabby ways to improve yourself. Although we didn't get our hands on any while playing through the first hour of the game, we did see that chipsets, items that you can slot into your Transstar uniform, can give you certain boosts like extra protection and inventory space for picking up as much rubbish as your heart desires. And if you're going to be carrying around biohazardous waste in your pockets next to that apple you picked up for lunch, well, you better make sure those pockets are as roomy as possible. In the sales division on Talos 1, you can have a nosy through the email on one of the desks to find something interesting. The email, titled Exports, reads, You can't ship at home. It has been noticed. One month's pay makes it go away. Poor old Yuri is being blackmailed for trying to take home more than just a few pens and staplers from work. Look under her desk and you'll find a case of four neuromods. It'd be rude not to take them and solve this whole problem on her behalf, although she's most certainly dead at this point. So on the bright side, she definitely won't be getting fired. Way to play the system, Yuri. A delightful thing we noticed after we killed mimics and attempted to loot their remains was that there was one item we couldn't pick up yet. A tumor. Lovely. This requires something called an acropsy to unlock, which we're sure is as warm and cuddly as it sounds. It's possible that this will be how alien powers become available to Morgan in the game. And even though it works out well for us, we do have to wonder why, if they're apparently so advanced and all, the Typhon haven't been making much needed appointments with their oncologist. That's a weird sentence to say out loud. You might have heard whispers of this one already, but here's a closer look at how you can turn trash into tools on Talos 1. As you explore your surroundings, picking up banana peels, copper wire, bits of alien and old plant cuttings, rest assured that there is a method to the madness. Soon enough, you'll come upon a recycler, a machine where you can dump all your junk into a bin and hit a button to transform all the waste into processed blocks of material. It comes in different varieties, from organic to exotic to synthetic, and these cubes can then be used in conjunction with fabrication licenses to 3D print tools and weapons at a fabricator. Select a fabrication plan, slot the necessary material blocks into the machine, and away you go. It's an important process because all tools and weapons will degrade over time, and you can dismantle any duplicates you have to craft the items that you really do want. Clever and good for the environment. It's a win all round. The glue cannon is probably one of the most diverse tools in Prey. Not only can you use it to create platforms and stairways and put out fires, you can also use it to slow or completely freeze your enemies. And the wonderful thing about using the glue cannon against mimics is that you end up inadvertently creating beautiful living works of art. As the mimics are fast moving and tend to stretch and swipe in all directions while attacking, firing at them with the cannon freezes them in all manner of interesting shapes. This wouldn't look out of place in the Tate Gallery, to be honest. But don't sit around admiring your sculptures for too long. They're fully capable of coming back to life and ripping your face off. I may not know art, but I know what I don't like. And it's that.
appropriately located under a desk in the Transtar sales division, the Huntress Boltcaster is a toy crossbow that, at first glance, is pretty pointless. Its foam bolts do zero damage, but it can be more useful than it first appears as it allows you to remotely trigger buttons and switches or straight up distract enemies away from your location. The flexi foam bolts can then be picked up and used again, although they're surprisingly plentiful around the station. At any rate, it's a Nerf gun that makes funny noises when you fire it, so to be honest, that's all the reason I need to make room in my inventory. There you have it. If you're curious to see more of the first hour of Prey and don't mind a few early spoilers, you might want to check out our Let's Play. Or for a slightly more detailed look at the novelty Huntress Bowcaster Nerf Gun and how to find it, click the other video on screen now. If you enjoyed, don't forget to like and subscribe for more from Eurogamer and happy hunting.